I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Hey, welcome to another episode of Vision is Better. Today I want to tell you a story. Gather around, kids. It's story time. Um, the two photographs on the screen behind me are, they were made in Cairo in 2009. I was on the trip that would eventually become the photographs for my first book, Within the Frame, uh, which incidentally is about to be released as a second edition. And uh, digging through the archives and looking at some of the photographs and giving them some new treatments has uh, reminded me of some things. One of the things that uh, reminded me of was uh, an experience that I had there. And it's one of my favorite stories. I was wandering around old Cairo and uh, you know, I had my cameras around my shoulders and, and that sort of thing. And I came around this corner and there was this great scene in front of me. There was, uh, there were two gentlemen and actually there were three gentlemen and, and uh, on four chairs. And then the fourth chair right in the middle of, uh, between the first gentleman and the second, anyway, it doesn't matter, there's a cat cat was sitting on the chair so it was a gentleman a cat and two gentlemen and it was this really cool scene and I dropped down on one knee and I raised my camera to my face and uh wouldn't you know it the frigging cat betrayed me kind of went Rawr! and took off and of course the three guys who until that moment were paying no attention to me whatsoever uh turned and looked at me and they were smoking away you know being very cool and uh of course I had the camera up to my eye at this point it was just meant to be a casual candid uh photograph and the one guy looks at me, uh, this gentleman here, he looks at me and he, and he kind of does this and he wags his finger. Uh, he says, $10. And of course, I, you know, it's a game. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to play that game. Uh, nevertheless, I walked over to the other gentleman and I said, oh, please, you know, let me, let me make your photograph. You're such, such good looking individuals. You've got your great scarves and please let me, you know, please. And, and this, this one guy, the, the one on the left, kind of eventually relented and he said okay and uh and as quickly as I could I pulled the camera to my face I made a, a really a very terrible photograph and at the time Polaroid in conjunction with a company called Zinc was creating a little pocket printer that they were calling the Pogo and uh it had all kinds of shortcomings but uh, including the fact that you had to shoot in raw and jpeg then you had to get the little cable out you had to plug it in and turn it on it had to warm up the battery lasted for like eight prints if you were lucky and but eventually it would spit out a business card sized photograph so uh so that was what happened i pulled it out they were kind of wondering what was going on and i gave this guy his photograph and uh, he was thrilled. He went from being rather, you know, austere to being just very jubilant. And he was looking and he was showing, you know, he's pointing at his chest and he's showing his friends his, his photograph. And uh, and the other guy turns towards me, the, the first guy that was a little less than enthusiastic. And he, you know, he does this, like, take my photograph. And I said, $10. And you see this great smile kind of creep across his face and he realized that he'd been had. And of course I made his photograph. Of course I gave him the, the, uh, the print. And uh, it's one of the things that opened a lot of doors. People often ask me whether I uh, pay for the photographs that I take of people. And while I have no, uh, usually have no objection to, uh, you know, to sharing the wealth if they've been a part of something that I value, I think it's only fair that we participate in that. Again, I'm not a photojournalist. There are ways of doing things uh, as a photojournalist and I don't do it that way because I'm not a photojournalist. So uh, occasionally I'm quite happy to, but I would rather give something more. I would rather give my time. I'd rather give something that they don't already have. Uh, if I give them a couple dollars, frankly, they'll stick it in their pocket and feel like they've probably feel like they fleeced me. But if I give them a print uh, from my experience, the joy that I see on their faces, that they value these things. They don't have something like this. And so it's been a, a number of years since I've used the Pogo for some of those disadvantages, disadvantages that I've just mentioned. Um, enter the Fujifilm Instax Share, what do they call it? The Smartphone Share Printer. As you can see, it's not very large. Uh, it's got, it's very simple. It's got, uh, it's got a door on the back for paper. It's got a little door here for two CR2 batteries. I don't know how long they last because I haven't actually gone out in the field with this, but I wanted to show you the possibility because I'm very excited about it. Uh, my next trick is with, trip is with grizzly bears and I doubt very much that they're going to be interested in keeping pictures of themselves. Uh, and after that, it's hammerhead sharks and giant mantas, uh, the same 
applies. Um, but what I love about this, so you basically, you put the paper in, I think it takes like 10 or 12 sheets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sheets. And there's a, there's a little indicator here to show you which battery life it is, which is great because the Pogo didn't have that. There's an indicator here to indicate which, uh, you know, how many papers are left. And what's wonderful about it is that you don't connect this with a USB or anything like that. You just wirelessly send it from your camera. Now, uh, again, I'm... I shoot Fuji and so wirelessly can send from my Fuji to this printer, which is great. But if you don't, um, not a big deal. I've always got my iPhone with me and just downloading an app. If so say you shoot Sony or Nikon or whatever, or four by five film, you get your iPhone out, you take a quick photograph and from the uh, wirelessly from with your Wi-Fi, it sends it very quickly and it gives you one of these. So this is business card. Um, this, I did this earlier and I was going to do a demo, but the problem is I record this on an iPhone and I can't use the iPhone to when I'm using my problem. So that's what it gives you. The quality is, uh, interesting. I would not call this, uh, archival or, uh, accurate. Uh, but if you are out in uh, wandering around and you have an opportunity to leverage something this simple and turn it into something relational, something that's mutually beneficial and give them, put into their hands something that they don't have, um, then I strongly recommend this solution. This is very small. It doesn't weigh that much. You could travel with this, throw it in your bag. The papers come in little foil wrapped um, packs of 10 and I'm going to put show notes down below on the YouTube show that uh, that connect you with uh, getting one of these on Amazon and uh, the links for these so you can see how much they are there um, it's it, for what it gives you I don't think it's that expensive I'm a little reluctant to pour more plastic into the universe so I will not be printing hundreds of these in fact you need to approach this whole thing with a little uh, discretion because very often if you're in the middle of uh, a village, for example, and you start cranking these babies out, everyone's going to want one. And uh, you're either going to be there a long, 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 long time hoping for, uh, hoping your batteries last and hoping that you have more paper in your bag, uh, or you're going to uh, invoke a riot. So you need to be kind of careful. Uh, my sort of my policy is to uh, give these sort of things out uh, on the down low, give, give them out quietly as a thank you as you would, you know, sliding a couple bucks into someone's hand. I like to do it fairly quietly and importantly at the very end of what I'm doing because if I want to go back the next day, this can either uh, lubricate those relationships or it can make it very difficult. So you got to kind of play it carefully. Uh, if you're just there one day, I suggest you hand these out at the end because uh, it will make things difficult when you show up the next day and, or later on that day when people are clamoring for their picture. It just puts another barrier in the way of what I consider an otherwise excellent tool to uh, open the door to genuine uh, relationships and uh, a respectful exchange of time for something of value like a photograph. Um, so anyway, I encourage you to take a look at that. I think that this uh, Fujifilm Instax is, uh, and I am not sponsored by them, I paid full pop for this, but I think this is, uh, despite the name, because of the name, I don't care, this is an opportunity to reciprocate with people that have been very kind. It's an opportunity to put something of value into their hands and to share the love. And I'm a big fan of sharing the love. If you would like to share the love, uh, leave comments in the comment section. Please subscribe if you would like to tell others about the Vision is Better show. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. Remember, gear is good, but vision's better. Take care.